Uh, next talk is by Hanil Barbosa, and that's going to be a live talk. So thanks for the introduction, Armin. Uh, my name is Henio. I'm an assistant professor of computer science at the Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And I'm going to present to you guys our joint work on scalable algorithms for abduction via enumerative syntax guided synthesis. So first, I'm going to introduce to you the abduction problem as we see it, and uh, what is our motivation to try to solve it. Then I'm going to present uh, our approach to trying to solve this problem via SIGAS syntax guided synthesis in a scalable manner. Then I'll present our experimental evaluation and finally the conclusions that we have drawn from this work. So abduction, there are in different fields, different definitions, but the, the one that we're interested in is that what are the facts that are missing such that I can reach a conclusion, I can prove something. So the definition that we go by for the abduction problem is that given a set of axioms and the goal, you must find a solution. A solution for this problem is one that is consistent with the set of axioms as shown by this condition here, and such that the solution together with the axioms is sufficient to entail the goal. And by solving this problem, there is a number of applications that you can cast as a something that depends on this problem. So recently in the past decade, there has been quite a lot of interest in uh, applications that rely on this problem, mostly in program analysis, for example. So the, the most intuitive way of leveraging this problem is that you have a given proof obligation to discharge in your verification engine, but you don't have all the facts. So do you need to change your specification somehow, and then how would you do this? How would you know how to change the specification? One way of automatically finding out is by solving the abduction problem. It's finding the missing facts that you can, uh, with them, then prove the proof obligation. However, despite all these um, interesting applications, there has not been a, a general flexible standalone tool that performs abductive reasoning that you can just use as a black box and plug in into your more general engine. There have been some attempts to reach this, such as the GPID tool and explain in the past decade, but they, they suffer from being restricted to logic fragments, be it in the method that they implement or in the implementation itself, or they are flexible as in the sense that the criteria that they use to find solutions, because as you can imagine, there are many different solutions to an abduction problem generally. So you are often interested in solutions within some specific criteria. It's often not as flexible, the kind of solutions that you would get from using such tools. So our main motivation is try to make uh, a tool that can be general, flexible, plug and play to be used in, in some engines. And our approach to doing this is using SIGA, Syntax Guided Synthesis, in which it provides you a lot of generality because you can use it as long as the theory in which you are trying to solve the problem is supported by the SMT solver. You can use syntax restrictions modeled by a context-free grammar to encode the criteria for the solutions you want to, to find. And there is a standardized language that it can be, you can just write the problems in this language and black box solvers can be used with it. So then we recast the abduction problem as in, so that it can be mapped quite nicely to syntax guided synthesis as syntax restricted abduction problem for a given theory in which we now annotate the the entailment relation here with a theory. We require that the solution is consistent to affect the axioms within a given theory. And moreover, that the solution is generated by a given grammar. So it's with, it is within the syntax restrictions. All right, so to give you a context now of not only the method of use, but SIGAS itself, if the audience is not familiar with it, syntax guided synthesis is a uh, a framework that casts the more general program synthesis problem has been introduced somewhat recently in which you generally, you would have a specification that you would give to a synthesizer in the classic program synthesis problem so that you have a program that satisfies the specification. It's found automatically. But now you annotate the synthesis, you annotate the problem with also syntax restrictions that are given by a context-free grammar the specification is modeled uh, formally as a second order formula 
uh, parameterized by a given theory such that this function here that is within this formula is the program that you are trying to find. And it standardizes the problem and allows you by quite a lot of flexibility to use a, a grammar to restrict the, the space and to use uh, solvers that support the theory to better guide the, the process of synthesis. The most common approach that is used, that has been used in the past decade to solve this problem is what is known as enumerative counterexample guided inductive synthesis, in which you have a, a, a refinement loop in a sense, in which you have a learner that enumerates solution, candidate solutions, you have a teacher which you can see as a, an SMT solver that is verifying these candidates so that a solution is generated from a grammar, a candidate solution, then the verifier will check if it satisfies the specification, and if not, you have a counterexample. Right, so this is the framework in which we are going to work with. Uh, and then the first, the first main contribution of our work is how we solve the abduction problem using enumerative counterexample guided inductive synthesis. So our specification has two components. The component that the, the solution must be consistent with the axioms and more importantly, that the solution together with the axioms entails the goal. So this, uh, if we cast it in a refutational sense, so that the solution being sufficient of the axioms to entail the goal is viewed as, as so this must be unsatisfiable so that the solution works. And we use the counter examples that are generated nicely in this SIGIS framework to better discard candidates that would be unfeasible for our specification. So we accumulate counterexamples that have a, a, the property specifically that they are uh, points in which the axioms hold and points in which the goal does not. So that by accumulating this set of points, these counterexamples, whenever we generate a candidate, we know for sure that this candidate will not work for uh, showing that this is unsatisfiable if the candidate is not false on all the points that I have accumulated so far. Because if the goal is false on the point, this is going to be true. And if the axiom is also true in that point, it's also true. So if the solution, the candidate solution is also true on the point, then for sure, this is not going to be unsatisfiable. So to show you an example of how this works, to give a, a motivation to you, we have here, uh, an example in which I take T as a theory of linear integer arithmetic. I take as my set of axioms this atom here that this variable must be greater or equal than zero. And my goal is that the sum of these three variables must be greater or equal than zero. My syntax restrictions are encoded as this context free grammar. So that in a, in a CGIS framework, I will have an enumerator that is going to be generating candidate solutions from the terms that are generated by this grammar. And, <clears throat> sorry, and I have to verify that it conforms to the specification, that it's consistent with the set of axioms in this case of the abduction problem, and that together with the set of axioms, it entails the goal. And moreover, I'm going to use the process I just uh, described to you briefly of how we eagerly prune the candidate solutions. So we accumulate the set of points that have this property that the axioms holding them and the goal does not, and we start enumerating. So I, the, the variables will not work directly. So I'll start with the atoms. The first atom that I would enumerate is this, and I have no sets of points. So I have to test this as a candidate solution directly. And it will fail because the axiom together with the candidate solution and the negation of the goal is satisfiable when it should be unsatisfiable for it to work. And then I have a counterexample, which I save as my point that I'm going to use for further testing. When I get a next candidate, before I do the satisfiability checking, I'm going to evaluate on that point and it must be false. It is false on that point, the points that I have accumulated so far. So I'm going to again do the satisfiability check, but the satisfiability check again fails. And I have another counterexample. So I save again this counterexample and I'm going to proceed with my enumeration. I get another candidate and this candidate, however, is not false on all points. It's in fact true on both the points. This means that necessarily this candidate would fail if I would do the satisfiability check. I would get again a satisfiable query when I should have an unsatisfiable one. So I can directly discard this candidate. I proceed with the enumeration process. I get another candidate. It's 
it holds on my my criteria that it must be false on all the points. I test again that sets. However, oh sorry, I forgot one step. Uh, it it must be also uh, consistent with the axioms. But this because I have two criteria, right? Not only telling the goal, but it has to be consistent with the axioms. And this candidate, however, is not consistent with the axioms, so I can discard it. I get another candidate. It does not pass in the criteria of uh, clearing my points. So I get another candidate, fails again, another candidate, fails again on the points, another candidate, again. And finally, I get another candidate that passes on my two points that I have, and I'm going to do the satisfiability checks. This is a candidate for which both the, my criteria for the specification hold. It is sufficient to entail the goal together with the axioms, which means that it is unsatisfiable, and it is consistent with my set of axioms. Therefore, I have found a solution to the abduction problem, as I have defined it. So this is all nice and well. However, there are a few issues. So the, the main issue is regarding scalability, because while enumerative counterexample guided inductive synthesis works quite well, it has the inherent limitation that if you need a solution that is large in the sense that uh, the, the term that you need to generate from the grammar requires a lot of operators and we do a principal enumeration in which you go generally by size for enumerating candidates it can take quite a long time to get to the sufficient large candidate that would be a solution to your problem so just to give you a flavor of the, the issue that we have at hand, I mean, this is of course exponential. If we are enumerating candidates from this grammar, this grammar here in this case of the bit vector grammar, of the bit vector theory, uh, to enumerate terms of size four, for example, it would take me a few hours. And then if I would go to size five, then it would take a, a, a incredible number of days that we, <laughs> we didn't wait long enough to test. So we need, we need better solutions. And there have been uh, proposals in, in, the, in the community recently to use what is known as divide and conquer techniques. These divide and conquer techniques, they, are, they work by not trying to directly enumerate a candidate that would work as a solution already, but to build a pool of enumerated terms that your learner is going to use as a basis to build solutions. So instead of directly enumerating a full candidate solution, you would enumerate partial solutions, solutions that would work in part of your, of your sample of points, and you would piece them together into an overall solution using different techniques. Commonly what has been used has been decision tree learning, so viewing this as a classification problem in which the points that you have so far, the counterexamples work as a sample, and the the enumerated terms work as labels and features for your decision tree. And you would use this to classify the sample correctly. And once you have classified the sample correctly, you would only then generate a candidate that you would verify with your teacher, with the SMT sober, for example. And the advantage of this is that you can generate solutions without of a given size, without needing to enumerate terms of that size. You can generate a solution of size three, for example, if you have enumerated terms of size only one, for example, which is exactly what happens in this example here, if I'm not mistaken. So this provides better scalability. So in this spirit, we have our second contribution, main contribution, is a divide and conquer algorithm for doing abduction so that it generalizes, in a sense, that procedure that I have just shown in which I'm not now trying to directly enumerate my candidate uh, abduct, my solution to the abduct, abduction problem, but I'm going to be enumerate a series, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to be enumerating a series of atoms which I can combine into conjunctions that would then compose a solution to the abduction problem. So in that setting that I had before, in which I had my axioms, I had my goal, and I have my candidate, and I have this set of points that are the counterexamples with that property that they hold on the axioms, but they falsify the goal. I have another thing that I maintain in my algorithm now. I have 
a set of enumerated formulas, which are going to be used as a pool from which candidates are going to be built. And I can relax my condition that candidates must be false on all points to, since I'm going to build a conjunction, I have a series of conjuncts, and for every point in which the goal must be false, it suffices that one of the conjuncts is false. So rather than enumerating a term that directly falsifies all points, I just need to piece together several terms in which every point has at least one of the conjuncts falsifying the goal. Because otherwise, I would again make the, the query that has to be unsatisfiable satisfiable. The other main component of this uh, extension to have more scalability of algorithm is that when I enumerate, a, when I generate a candidate that is not consistent with the axioms, rather than just discarding it and not learning anything, I do use unsat core learning to have uh, a negative witness in a sense that. I know that a given candidate, this conjunctive set, is inconsistent with my axioms. So I take it, the unset core that represents this inconsistency, and I use this to eliminate all future candidates if a subset of the candidate occurs in the unset core. Because if it does, necessarily, that candidate will also be inconsistent with the axioms. So I have these two now aspects. I can piece together smaller solutions and better leverage my points to exclude candidates. And I can exclude candidates directly based on unsat cores of previous failed candidates that are inconsistent with the axioms. Again, to give you an example, I repeat the same uh, axiom set and the same goal that I had before. But now in my run of my algorithm, I'm going to be accumulating not only points and generating candidates, but also a set of unsat cores that represent uh, uh, elements of E, this enumerated atom set that is inconsistent with the axioms, and I will of course be enumerating the atoms. So I enumerate this first atom, and then I'm going to be building candidates that are combining uh, elements that have been enumerated before. So that's the only one that I have to enumerate. I don't have any points to do any exclusion, so I directly do the satisfiability check. Uh, this is the same example that we had seen before. So this is again satisfiable. I learn a counterexample. Then I'm going to enumerate something again. I know that x greater or equal than zero is inconsistent with this because I just learned it. So I have to test the new guy. It works in terms of clearing the point. Then I do a satisfiability check. I learn again a counterexample. And now what is different is that my candidate, I have combined the two previously enumerated terms rather than enumerating a conjunction of these two atoms, which would have a size much bigger than the size one that these two individually have. I evaluate them and notice that to clear the points, I use the two atoms. One of the atoms is sufficient to falsify one of the points and the other falsify the other point. I don't need that they individually falsify both points simultaneously. So this allows me to build a candidate. And this candidate, however, is inconsistent with the set of axioms. So then I learn one unsat core that will prevent further candidate solutions of containing it because they would again, directly being consistent with the set of axioms. I continue the procedure, uh, doing again the clearing based on the points. I will have a candidate here that passes the points, but it's inconsistent with the axioms. I learned the unset core and so on. Notice that when I enumerate now this new atom, I build a candidate combining two previously enumerated atoms. I can use the two, each one to satisfy one different point. And this candidate is sufficient to both entail the goal and is consistent with the set of axioms. So I have generated a candidate solution that is itself a solution by enumerating terms of size one and combining them. While before I had to enumerate a term of bigger size, three if I remember correctly, to reach a conclusion. So this allows us to reach conclusions faster in terms that we can enumerate terms of less size Thus, it, greatly, it can greatly reduce the cost of enumeration. All right, 
<clears throat> so another important point in extension of our algorithm is that we can use it to do incremental weakening. So as I had mentioned before, there are criteria that we want to optimize to when we are generating the abduction solutions. And one of them is logical strength. So one way in which you can generate increasingly weaker solutions is running this algorithm in incremental mode. So you can think of an outer loop over the, the search for abducts. And whenever you find a new abduct that is uh, more general than what you have enumerated so far, you can, add it disjunct you can add it disjunctively to the previous set of abducts and then you have a logically weaker solution. All right, so just to go to, to evaluation then, we have implemented this in the CBC4 Psi, which is how we call the Psi Solver within CBC4. Uh, we, we, we named them here. So the first one is doing the abduction via enumerative synthesis, enumerative CG, sorry. And the other is doing the abduction via divide and conquer that I explained afterwards. It uses baselines GPID and explain to, for comparison. Uh, and one issue, however, that we had in setting up this experimental evaluation was benchmarks. Because uh, as I mentioned, there are not these that much engines that solve this problem as a standalone thing. They're generally embedded into more general tools. And it was not easy for us at all to extract benchmarks that are used from these tools such that we could easily cast them as a cyber's problem. We, we, feel, we feel that this is beyond the scope of this work because it can be quite challenging to get a tool that was not meant for this to use a black box over as part of a backend for its engine. So we proceed by then generating our own benchmarks. We used as a basis the relevant verification logics in SMT lib, the standard library for SMT solvers. So we took uh, arithmetic, both linear and nonlinear, and string solving. And we took satisfiable benchmarks and we saw satisfiable benchmark as willing to be unsatisfiable benchmarks. So we cast them in somehow a doc manner, some other doc manner, in which the last assertion of a series of assertions in a satisfiable benchmark was seen as the goal. Uh, this should not have been negated here, I'm sorry. And the first minus that goal are the axioms, and I want to find a solution that's consistent with the axioms and that entails the goal. And according to the variables that occur in the problem, we took quantifier free problems. And the logic that we have, we generate a grammar accordingly. So the first thing that we evaluated is how the, the more scalable technique based on divide and conquer compares with the one that's doing directly enumerative CGs modulo the, the eager discarding that I mentioned. And we see that the for strings, for example, it has a big advantage also for nonlinear arithmetic, but we see that there is quite a bit of orthogonality here. And we attribute this to the fragility of to the heuristic notion that is often present when you're doing integer solving. But nevertheless, the, the results are quite encouraging in which the more scalable approach is indeed more scalable. It performs much better than the baseline one. We also compared logical strength of the solutions. And in that case, however, the baseline often produces weaker solutions. And if you think about it a little bit, this, this can be quite intuitive because the, the more scalable approach, this divide and conquer approach, it is uh, from smaller pieces, it is combining them however it can to find a, a solution. And it's not going for minimality while the, this one is going to minimality. It's enumerating solutions in increasing order of size and often you can get solutions that are weaker by doing this. You, it can be more costly, but this is a benefit that you have with it. All right, so we compared with explain and then we, we had some difficulties in doing this, um, this comparison. One of them is that we could only use the linear integer arithmetic because we had issues with the other logics. We had errors often when using the tool. And uh, there is another important point is that explain is solving a harder problem because by default, it only finds solutions that have the minimal number of variables in it. So it's not only solving the problem, but it's directly optimizing to only find minimal solutions. So we, we have the same numbers as before for the different configurations of CBC4 in linear integer arithmetic, and it performed quite much better than explain. But even though explain is 
is solving this harder problem if we run the this uh, as an example if we run this configuration of cbc4 the one that's doing divide and conquer with the incremental mode that one that is combining disjunctively a series of solutions it was often the case i mean most of the time that we were able to find a solution also with the minimum number of variables as explained was oh i think oops uh, all right, we also compared with GPID, and with GPID, we again had some issues with the evaluation. One important one is that they are also not solving exactly the same problem. They are solving the problem finding implicates, logical consequences of formula, and the negation of a logical implicate is an abduct. But they do not have the notion of taking a set of axioms. They directly take the whole formula. They, they also work taking as a basis of several benchmarks. They take the whole formula as the goal. Uh, we did the evaluation of the same benchmarks they used in a recent paper uh, that's using uninterpreted functions. And as you see, GPID performs quite well, <clears throat> but it should be noted better than us, in, in fact, but it should be noted that it, it has some restrictions in terms of flexibility. It uses pre-computed abduces. So abduces, you can think of them as these theory literals that we enumerate. They start with a pre-computed set. And the configuration that restricts this pre-computed set to size one performs much, much better than the other one. But this is something that you define ad hocly outside of the, of the framework. So it's, uh, it's very restrictive in this sense. And on a positive note, even though uh, the best configuration of CBC4 was slower than GPID1, the one that directly restricts the size of the components that they use for building the updates, it was not that much slower in commonly solved problems. And it's, it was not that far away as well. All right, so just to conclude, we have proposed this new scalable enumerative CIGAS framework for doing abduction. It achieves the goal of being scalable as our evaluation shows. It's also general because it's it's only parameterized by the theory that the simply solver supports. It's flexible because it, it has this standard language. You can have the syntax restrictions as a context-free grammar to include different criteria and so on. And there are a number of future works. We want, we want to integrate in verification engines. We want to explore lifting this approach to interpolation, using abduction to generate rewrites and so on. All right, so this is my talk. Thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to take questions. So oh, thank you. Um, so are there questions from the audience? Yes, there's like one uh, answer live. Okay. By Andrew Jones. So can I? So I have to stop sharing to see the questions or? No, I think Armin unmuted me so I can ask my question live. Um, I'm just curious, does this work for all of the logics that CVC4 supports, like the string and sequence logics, or is it restricted to particular um, fragments? String and sequence, you said. As in the, the, string, the string and regex logics that you can use in CVC4, can you use this approach for all of the logics that CVC4 supports? In principle, yes. The, the, the only limitation would be so for example, if you do not provide a grammar for the problem, CVC4 has to generate a grammar automatically. And the number of logics for which it can generate grammars automatically is smaller than the number of logics it supports. But if you are providing a grammar, then the, the set should be the same in terms of supported logic by the CNT solver and for the cyber solver. Thank you. Okay, another question by Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Okay, so we... Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess you can read the, the question in the Q&A answer. I was just wondering how much work it is to, to craft the, 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 lo the, the grammar for the logic. Is it work intensive uh, or, or not? Is it easy or...? It is not work intensive. What can be work intensive is, you, is if you have, uh, if you are trying to optimize for certain shapes of solutions. So it might be a little bit of an iterative process. Uh, but if you want to generate a, a, a general grammar that generates the terms that you, you would expect, for example, for linear integer arithmetic, then it can be quite easy. 
And as I said, CPC4 also has the capability of generating default grammars that will be as general as possible. So, yeah, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, then, then let's just thank speaker.